welcome to quality food safety 101 this is arsalan today we are going to talk about food poisoning and its controls this is the fifth topic in the basic food safety playlist the whole playlist uh, link will be attached in the description as well as there will be a card in the video in the playlist we have covered till now introduction to food safety and hazards like contamination multiplication and survival which are quite extensively covered in a lot of details I suggest you have a look at them and then come back and watch food poisoning and its controls because this video will be a short video which will only cover food poisoning basic information and the controls and all the back data has already been covered in contamination multiplication survival details let's start which is caused by consumption of contaminated or poisonous food which may be a result of large number of microorganisms already in the food or it might be due to presence of toxin in the food all this has been covered in the multiplication video as I suggested before now in food poisoning the most important thing to understand is that the food looks okay that's why people consume it if the food is not looking okay and if it is showing signs of spoilage in any way then people will not consume it and then they will not get food poisoning so theoretically the food looks okay it has no signs of uh, spoilage and it has pathogen microorganism which result in food poisoning or it might have the toxin of pathogen microorganism which results into food poisoning as well as i discussed in the first video or the introduction to food safety video that food poisoning is not a small thing more than 600 million people in one year get food poisoning and out of that 400,000 plus can die from this disease and amongst them more than 100,000 are children. These are the statistics which are on your screen right now. This shows that food poisoning is a massive problem and we need to control it. The most important thing to again understand is that food poisoning is perfectly controllable. It is not a disease which cannot be controlled. The precautions which we have been talking about in the previous videos and which we will talk about today and afterwards also in the same playlist will enable your business to control food poisoning and will make the food safe for your consumers. Now, when we talk about food poisoning, generally people think of diarrhea, vomiting, headache, stomach cramps and these are all correct symptoms of food poisoning. The major symptoms of food poisoning as I said already are diarrhea or in some cases bloody diarrhea, vomiting, fever and this can be very painful since it can be coupled with general body malaise and stomach cramps. If anybody has such symptoms they should go to a doctor and get proper medication. Now sometimes food poisoning might not be that severe. We might have a little stomach cramp or maybe a little diarrhea and within one day or few hours we might be okay. This is a mild case of food poisoning. But in some cases this can be really dangerous and people can die from it. So we should not be taking this lightly. Especially as a food organization or as a food handler we need to be very careful for the safety of our consumers. People are coming to our organization to consume food or buy food from us and they are trusting us. As a result, we need to trust our practices and we need to follow proper food safety practices to ensure that people don't get sick from our food. So how does food poisoning happen? When a person consumes food and if that food is already having large amount of microorganisms due to contamination or multiplication or maybe toxin of microorganisms due to multiplication, that food after going inside the body of the person will show symptoms. This time frame or time period between the consumption of the food and its start of the symptoms is called as incubation period or onset period. It could be between 1 hour to 36 hours generally. Once the symptoms start, after few days the person will recover. This recovery period is called as the duration of food poisoning and it could be between 1 day to 7 days in general. In some cases food poisoning can be very severe and it can last or the symptoms can last for more days than that. Now there are some risk groups which are more susceptible to diseases and specifically food poisoning. These risk groups are for example pregnant women, old people, 
which are having uh, weak immune system or immunocompromised people which may be suffering from any other disease and children. When an organization or a food establishment is serving risk group people, they need to be extra careful with their practices of food safety because their clientele or the consumers are having high risk of food poisoning. For example, take an take a example of a nursing home. So a canteen in a nursing home should create food which is very very safe because the people there are old age and they can have high chance of food poisoning. So let's talk about some of the myths and facts of food poisoning. One of the myths which people have is if the food looks okay or smells okay it will not cause food poisoning which is wrong. Actually the food which is looking okay can only cause food poisoning because that is the food you or I will consume. If the food is already spoiled and is smelling bad and tasting bad, we will not eat it. And as a result, we'll never get food poisoning. Food poisoning only happens from food which is consumed, not by looking at the food. So that's a wrong perception. Then people think also that if the food is fresh, it cannot cause food poisoning. Again, that's a myth. If the food is not handled properly, even if it is fresh, it can still cause food poisoning. Then one more concept is that only dirty kitchens can cause food poisoning or the food which is cooked in dirty kitchens can cause food poisoning. Again, that's not a necessity. Of course, with dirty kitchens, it increases the chance of contamination and food poisoning. I agree with that, but it's not mandatory that dirty kitchens will cause food poisoning. Even clean kitchens can result into food poisoning of food if it is not handled properly. Then last but not the least, properly cooked food cannot cause food poisoning. Again, a wrong co concept. If we cook the food thoroughly, then after that, do not handle it properly and leave it outside for a long time and allow again multiplication of microorganisms, then it will cause food poisoning. So how do we prevent food poisoning? This is called as a food poisoning chain. We need to break this chain to control food poisoning. So what happens here is that food poisoning bacteria first contaminate the food and then these bacteria with ample amount of time and proper temperature will multiply and then people will get food poisoning. So the control measures are good hygiene practices and prevent contamination. So if you look at the full video of contamination, you will find full controls on that. Then prevent multiplication and do heat processing like cooking and thorough killing of microorganisms. Again, these controls are fully described in the multiplication videos and survival video. Then at the last, even doing after all of these controls, if you feel that the food is still unfit, do not serve the food to the consumers. Destroy the food. That is a better option rather than serving food, which is going to cause uh, food poisoning to people. This brings us to the end of food poisoning. Guys, food poisoning is a real challenge. We need to take it seriously. Have a look at the videos of contamination and multiplication to understand the basics of food poisoning in detail and the controls are also there. Apply those controls to make sure that you and your consumers are both safe from food poisoning. Subscribe to our channel, like the video and press the bell icon so that you can get timely updates from us. Thank you and see you in the next one. Thank you.